You should have been there. How could I? Look at me. Not everything is about you. I need to see Einar. Let me help, please. I need my husband. Can you get him? I can't. I need to talk to my husband. I need to hold my husband. We need him. God, you just get him. Can you at least try? I'm sorry. And that's a clip from The Danish Girl starring Eddie Redmayne. I'm delighted to say Eddie's on the programme. Eddie, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? Well, I'm pretty good as well. But you had a great year. You've just had an extraordinary 12 months. I've had a pretty lucky year, yeah. It's, um... No, you haven't. It's not lucky. <laughs> a wee bit, I think. I'm trying which to was, take which stock was, of it. Which was the lucky bit? Um... I always think that sort of the, the, the work you do and the, the, is, it's a sort of succession of random events that happen to have concurred and you've been in the right place at the right time. But um, so there's been a certainly, I think certainly with the Stephen Hawking film, I think about four other actors were up with it before me and they happened to turn it down. So I was, that was very lucky. Oh, OK. OK. So you benefited from that. So I want to ask you more about that in a moment. But just tell us about The Danish Girl and tell us the story that you're telling in this movie. Yes. So, um, so The Danish Girl is it's a, a love story, really, about two artists who lived in Copenhagen in the 1920s, um, Ina Vena and Gerda Vena. And um, one day, Gerda was painting, was meant to be painting a model, and the model couldn't come for a sitting, so she asked her then husband to put on some stockings and her shoes, and and it awakened in um, in Einar her true self, and she became Lily Elba. She became one of the first women to, um, well, if not the first woman to undergo gender confirmation surgery, and it's really at its core, it's a it's a sort of a unique and, and I, I found sort of deeply powerful love story. And if I've got the facts right, uh, this is directed by Tom Hooper, and he saw you uh, playing viola. That's right. Is yeah. That, so how many years ago are we? To, in twelve. Uh, this is twelve. Twelfth night. night. No. Yeah. That was. It was actually. It was. A, it was a hundredth anniversary. Four hundredth anniversary production. Uh, with Mark Rylance at the, it was at the Middle Temple Hall where Twelfth Night was written for, and it was m- made by the Shakespeare Globe, and and uh, yeah, so I was playing Viola in that, which was about ten years ago, I think. And and that he saw something in you, so that when you were working on Les Mis together, that he approached you then. What did what did he tell you, and what was your reaction? You know, I was, I think I was attempting to man a barricade and, and sing, not particularly successfully. And, I, and one day he just gave this... He said, it surreptitiously placed this brown paper envelope in my, in my trailer and, and didn't say anything. There was no, um, there was, there was no sort of um, introduction. And he just said, will you have a read and tell me what you think? And I was, I, I was just sort of sucker-punched by how moving the story was. And, um, and I couldn't believe I didn't know about it. I mean, I am... Um, deeply biased but it felt like one of the great love stories of the 20th century and I couldn't believe that I didn't know about it and were you surprised that he wanted you to play the role was I, I was surprised because I didn't think the film would get finance with me uh, attached to it and it didn't <laughs> it took another another few years for, for the film to get made but um no I wasn't I mean I, I I had played women professionally I also went to an all boys school and played women when I was at school but um but this felt very different and it and it and for me it, as I began to research Lily it, it just, she was such an extraordinary woman it, it it felt like great privilege to get to play how do you, how do you research a role like this um for me I started by meeting women from the trans community of, of different generations. At the time, I was promoting Theory of Everything, um, and so I was travelling quite a lot, so I could meet women in London and Los Angeles and New York. And, and But also I had worked with Lana Wachowski, who is um, a wonderful director, and she had pointed me to to Jan Morris's book, Conundrum, a beautiful book. So this, this was when you were working on Jupiter. Or exactly. Yeah. And, she, and she knew, Lana knew Gerda and, and Lily's art and spoke passionately about their story. And, and, and so she really sort of pointed me in the right direction. So we see you playing Ina and we see you playing Lily. And um, can you explain the transformation that you had to go through, whether it be from a speech point of view or, or your stance, the gate, um, mm. all these things have to change. Was there a key? Was there something that you finally got you think, okay, I'm, I'm there? Well, what was important for me was trying to find who Lily was. So find who she was at the end of the film and then work back from there 
um, there was amazing insight. Some of it was drawings. Like there's this extraordinary drawing of, Liv- of Lily when she was living as Iron Eye. She has this incredibly high starched collar and this very tailored tight suit. And it, I always sort of viewed it in this, this drawing as being like a literally like a scaffolding of masculinity that she'd sort of put up around herself. And, and I wanted to make, make it feel like an unpeeling, an unraveling, a, a revealing of, of Lily. But also one of the, the, the trans women I met in Los Angeles described this period early on in her transition of, of hyper-feminization, of, of when she was just starting, had just come out and was beginning to transition, perhaps putting on a bit too much makeup or, or wearing clothes that were ultra-feminine. And she related it to a, a young girl's um, adolescence. And, and before finding who she or finding who she really was and and so I wanted that stage to be to play out through the film there are amazing portraits Gerda did of Lily that are early on in the transition that are super stylized and it's a sort of mannered femininity so I wanted to start there and hopefully by the end of the film all of that has has gone away and 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 she has sort of much less makeup back to her own hair rather than a sort of bright red wig and 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 finding herself what was it like the first time I mean and just here is Eddie Redmayne yeah. What was it like the first time you put on Lily's clothes and thought, okay, this is this is me. This is where I'm going to play. This is how I'm going to play it. Um, I think there wasn't there wasn't a sort of eureka moment because actually it was a it was months and months of of trying things and failing and 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 working with great collaborators, Jan Sewell, who I worked with on the Theory of Everything, a, a wonderful makeup artist, and Paco, the costume designer. Um, but there was a day, the first day that I came on set as Lily, um, and I was, I was really nervous, actually. I, I, you, I felt great scrutiny and... Can you describe what you, can you, describe what you looked like? Yes, so I was, I was wearing a bright red wig. I was wearing quite an operatic sort of dress. Um, I had um, a full makeup and, um, and heels, and I was walking into a set um, in London, and all these people I'd been working with were sort of staring at you, and, and one one felt a sense of scrutiny and and um, and judgment, and and you couldn't work out whether it was your own neurosis, but it sort of echoed back to some of the trans women I'd met had described this when they first went out into the world of that f- that sort of adrenaline, but also the the utter fear of of violence for them, whereas I was an entirely safe environment. For for them, it's the there was a re- you get that same scrutiny, but with it comes a great threat of violence. And when you put on, when you were wearing, when you were Lily, and when mm. you were wearing Lily's clothes, were you always Lily? So I, I know this is acting, yeah. but when you were walking to your the place where you when you were walking to the set, did you walk in as this might sound like a stupid question, but did you walk in as Eddie no. and then become Lily, that's, or were you Lily all the way through? That's a great question. I it's weird with acting because I don't have a sort of process as such. I, I mean, I try and do do as much research as I can, and and then, but with with Lily, as what was interesting was that you were playing her over different a, a sort of extended period, so her physicality would shift, her emotional. Um, place would shift and and so I would try and stay within the confines of where she was at that moment when I was shooting um a wee bit but I I I, I'm one of those people that think I sort of can leave it all at work and go home or I think I can and then occasionally my wife says and uh, little bits of characters can't come home with you what you would you stand in a particular way or smile like Lily yeah I mean I think elements of those both of those things um actually would and does it stay with you I mean could you if if you were now to go on stage as Lily, would would it all come straight? I think it back would, to you? yeah, no, because you, I did quite a lot of um, of of preparation. It was quite a year or two of, of and and your muscle memory, I think, gets quite quite. Um, but what then happens is you move on to an, a new character, and and then you start bringing home all those mm. things. I, I don't want to sort of over overstretch the point, but when you were playing Stephen Hawking, you were playing a man who was trapped. In, in a body that wasn't doing what he wanted it to do. And here you're playing a woman who is trapped in a man's body. Is there any similarity between between the two? I, I think... I mean, people Maybe just met, from an acting yeah, point of view. Yeah, I mean, people have observed the, the thing, and, and, and I think also people have sort of thought, oh, gosh, you, you know, is he trying to do another transforming part? But really what the history of this film was, 
it was something that I, I'd been offered long before Theory of Everything and only came into fruition afterwards. But, but, but there was something, in, I suppose, in the, in the change process of, of the physical things, of working with things like um, makeup and, and physicality that, that I could relate to the two. And I worked with some of the same um, collaborators mm-hmm. who I'd worked with on Theory of Everything. But as far as the stories, I, I totally hear what you're saying about the resonance, but they, they, felt, you, they felt very, um, very different. We need to mention Alicia Vikander, who plays... Extraordinary, uh, she? And, and, ext- and she's had an amazing year yeah. uh, uh, as well. But she plays Gerda, who you've already mentioned. Can you just describe a little bit about what she brings to the part? Because there are some times when she is the main character on the yeah. screen. Well, I mean, the, the, I mean if, it's interesting. The film is called The Danish Girl, and, and in the film she is referred to as The Danish Girl. And, and what I always loved about this script is it's about two extraordinary people. And, and God, Alicia is... She's formidable, really. She she trained in in Sweden as a as a ballerina, and she has all the sort of sort of um, the technical brilliance and the and the work ethic that comes with that. But she also has this kind of volcanic um, emotional capacity. So it was it was a treat to get to play opposite. Yeah, she she is brilliant. And there is, of course, now the possibility of back to back Oscars. I don't know about that. I, no, I think I know you don't want me to say <laughs> that, but you know, I'm just I'm just mentioning it. Was, um, do you know? If, for us, this is this has taken. I think it's fifteen years since since the, That's when the novel helps, came out. Yeah, the novel came out and the script was written, and and there have been hundreds of different guises of directors and actors and actresses attached to the film, and we're just pretty thrilled that it's finally made it to the cinema. So um, that for us is a is a lucky thing. And is there anything you can tell us about Fantastic Beasts? <sighs> J.K. Rowling was on my Radio 2 show. Was she? And of course, she is a delight, and she has so much so much to say. Oh, and even she that. wouldn't tell us much I about know. it. I know. Oh, God, if she's not telling anything, I'm, I definitely can't. Um, it I, must be a line, because I think you're... A line? Me, I can't possibly it's a word. <laughs> um, no, that I, we're, we're shooting in Leavesden, um, where they've built 1920s New York. It's a set unlike anything I've ever seen and witnessed. It feels like going back to a throwback of, of, of filmmaking, of the scale and the... The excitement of it, actually, I think everyone is so passionate about J.K. Rowling and about the, the the characters that she's created that we're just going, please, can we not get in the way of it? Like, let's just do everything we can not to screw it up. Do you have to make any transformations in it? Um, uh, no, I mean, other than I mean, it's um, uh, I suppose all characters have some sort of transformation, but no, this <laughs> this isn't uh, isn't one of those parts. And after the Danish girl, will you ever look at wardrobe? <laughs> in the same way again because obviously the, clo- the clothes are, f- are, are fabulous and, and very important and as you suggested part of the transformation where he realises uh, what might be happening but you must look at clothes in a different you way sort of, you sort of do and you um, I, yeah I, I, it, was, it was also interesting because that period in fashion was actually in the 1920s you had women's haircuts were getting shorter and more boyish and the clothes were becoming more androgynous so it was a kind of interesting time for and and that and for me I was trying to find curves and find a, but but actually the the clothes weren't helping with that so I kept sort of having to try and sort of manipulate things to try and sort of make it help but um no I don't think I'll ever look at dresses in the same way I have new respect for women well, um, Eddie, thank you very much indeed uh, uh, for joining us, and I hope 2016 is every bit as uh, important and exciting for you as last year. Thank you.